My name is Marie Angela Anderson. I was born in Jamaica on the 2nd of October 1951 and my mum's name um, is Sadie Claire McEwen. I grew up in downtown Kingston in a large tenement yard which was really really good. There's the um, Different people lived there. We had people, single mum lived there. We had people, a married couple lived there. And I lived there with my mum, my brother, my aunt and my gran. And so it was like a, a, fam, a family home, but a huge family home with different rooms, different rooms. So my mum, as I said, my mum, myself and my brother, we had a room for herself. My aunt and my grand, they had their, had their own room. We had to share bathroom, we had to share kitchen and we share whatever facilities in the yard we share. There's loads of kids. We're never lonely. There's lots to do, lots to play. And actually where I live was like living on a main street, something like Halston High Street, put it that way. And we live on the back. So there's always something happening. There's lots of fun. There's lots of places. And on another street where I, I grew up there, there's one of everything. There's a church, there's a cinema, there's a barbershop. There's rum bars, what we call pubs over here. There's rum bars. There were restaurants. There was, you know, so it, it was vibrant. It was lovely. I enjoyed living there. But my memory, it's, it's, it's a lot of playing because it was such a vibrant place to live. There's always something to do. So as soon as I get home from school, we normally change our school uniform and into what we call our play, our play clothes. And, you know, we just go out and play in, um, lots of running, skipping. We used to do what we, um, what we call over here in a hula hoop, you know, the hula hoop sway, you know. We do a lot of that, running, and, and just being outdoors. We're never indoors, you know. My mum would have to call and shout for us to come in when it's dinner time. And then we would eat quickly and help back to play. We're never in, even if it's raining, we're outside playing. We, we, it was no indoors at all until bedtime, so it was really fun. I had two friends who lived two doors away. They were slightly older than me, like maybe a year or two, but that didn't matter then, because mm. we all grew up in, in the, te the tenement yard, and her name was Yvonne Claudette, Yvonne and Claudette. So I used to write letters back to them, you know, because I missed it, I, I missed the outdoors, I miss seeing everyone, miss going on a Sunday, we used to, after church, we used to go to the cinema, or we used to go to the park, and uh, you know, have fun, it, you know, it was nice growing up in, in, especially where I live, it wasn't a rural place, mm. it was in the town, it was in the city, so there's always something happening. I went to a local school called Calabar, Calabar High School, and it was off well, it was off Sutton Street, near near where I live. Okay. Near where I live. Okay. And it, it was a nice school. I enjoyed it. My brother went there as well, so I had company there going there. Because I wasn't an un unhappy child. I didn't have an unhappy childhood. I was happy because of where we live. Always excitement. There's always something going on. But I, you know, uh, my my nan, my gran, she you know she was such a lovely a lovely person. So she made us me when my mum went, she made us home stay the same, you know. So I did miss my mum coming, but we keep getting letters and so, you know, and she sent us clothes and stuff like that. So we were really in this big tenement yard wearing all these England clothes, <laughs> you know, so we, with her coming, it did provide a better life for us, because my mum was a single, was a single mother, mm. what you call, you know, they, you didn't know it was a single mum then, but that's what we call it now, but my mum and dad weren't together, and so it was just us four, my aunt and my brother and my mum, so my mum always worked, but she said, you know, to give us a better life, and because of where we were living as well, she wanted us to have a better life and to sort of move away from this tenement yard and have something for herself. You know, so 
Um, she said to my to my grand then that she's going to come to London, but she was only going to come for five years, three to five years, so she could save, save hard and go back home and build a nice life for us out in Jamaica, not here, not here. <music> I came here when I was 13, so I think I was about 11, because she came that, She came in 1964, no, 62. My mum came in 1962, so I think about 12, 12 11, 12, when I cried and I cried, you know, because I, I didn't want her to go. I didn't want her to go, you know, because she's always there. We're even now, it's always just us. You know, though we got friends and families around us, but my mum is the is the backbone of the family. You know, she's going, and then I was a bit worried because my brother was growing up, and you know, where we live as well, start getting into friends that we didn't like that much. You know, and with no sort of male figure around us, we're sort of a bit worried about that. So my mum said, you know, she'll go, a couple of years, come back and. Hopefully things will be better for us. But I just know that my mum is coming here to make, to make money, to work hard, to make some money and make our life uh, much better. And yeah, her first job uh, when she came was to work in uh, a factory. It's a laundry and that laundry is still there. Well, she was sponsored up by a friend. Very, two, two of her best friends were here before. One lived in Lucian and one lived here in, in Halstead. So when she came, the one, the one that lives in Lucian, unfortunately, her marriage broke down at the time, so my mum couldn't stay with her. So the other friend, Dolly and Sunny, they said, oh, well, it's best to come and stay with us because my mum didn't know anyone at all, anyone at all. It was just these two late friends she was relying on because we all grew up in the same place. Yeah. And he said to her that uh, where they were living, that there was a room going vacant, a box room going vacant. So she asked the land, he asked the landlord, can his friend come and stay? And, and the landlord said yes. And then she came and we live at... Bolton Road in Halston, 14 Bolton Road in Halston. I remember it clearly, I can still see it. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I met my sponsor, because she didn't, she didn't know anyone at all, and these two friends were here before her, mm -hmm. and she sort of said to them, you know, right, and said, right, I'd like to come back. I need someone to sort of show me the ropes, uh, you know, when I come, because I don't know anyone here. I'm just coming with this intention two to three years to work and you know go back to look after my kids and they said well we're here before you so um we can come and stay with us they didn't sponsor and we're like um like you know giving her pay her fare to come over anything like that she did all that by herself you know but it's just to know that someone is here when she come because when she came first um the two friends dolly and sunny they work they work at the um the underground. So Sunny came and met her at Euston Station because um, she came on what is this huge ship, Begona. She came on, and I think she said it was twenty odd days she spent on on water mm -hmm. and everything. And then she was in like the lower cabin because she couldn't afford to go top cabin. So she was in the lower cabin with the butts. I don't know how many, six, eight, ten people in one, in one small cabin, you know. But she said being on there, she had fun because there were all people coming from the Caribbean to come to have a better life here in London. So when she came, as I said, Sunny met her at the Euston station, bought her home, showed her where she was going to live in this, in this small room. And I think she had to pay, I think the rent at the time was two, two, two pound fifty. And she was working, probably getting six pounds out of that. She had to pay her rent and then still save to send money home to us. The journey, it was like, I, all I remember was that I went to the, to the airport. Then it was called Pal Palisades Airport. And we were driven there by one of my aunt's friends. And then it was a group of us, a group of, uh, of boys and girls going, because we were called and company minor. There's a group. So we had this big placard around her there with our name and my mum's name on it. And then the stewardess then 
call them stewardess then. They, they look after us. I really too truly, I just was so excited getting on a plane, you know. I mean, we didn't up and we just sat there, you know, and they gave us like colouring books and stuff, you know, but I didn't do anything like that. I was just excited that I'm coming to see my mum and I'm on a plane coming. Even when I got off the plane, I didn't like what I see because it, was, it wasn't what I was expecting, you know, because I came in March and it was very cold. And I remember my mum came with a coat for me because she said, you have to wear a coat. I said, do you have to wear a coat? Because I came without a coat. I just thought it's going to be, it's not like, you know, Jamaica don't wear a coat or a cardigan or anything like that. So I came without one. And then she, um, and then I was very, I was very slim. I was really skinny, you know. And then she started to cry because she said, "Oh God, look how you look! Oh my God, you know." Like she took my grand was feeding us or looking after us. And I said, "No, that's just how I was," you know. And then um, I remember she even sent the clothes for me to wear to come, you know, and this hat and and this long white gloves on, <laughs> long white gloves mm -hmm. on and a, a bag, what we call a clutch bag now, and the bag and, and tight stockings and the thing, you know. So um, she, as soon as I came through, all of us came through, she was just standing there. And then, you know, you call, they call your names out and your parents come forward and, and collect you. And then she started to cry. I didn't cry when I see her. But she started to cry because she said, oh, God, you're so skinny. She's looking at my face and she keeps touching my face and stuff like that. Driving, coming back. It just looks so strange, yeah. And I remember feeling cold. I was very cold, you know. And then everything just looked so strange. And then we came, came into this house and then into this room. This is going to be where we're going to live, you know. It was, um, we left Jamaica the Saturday, the Friday and came the Saturday, or like the Saturday came the... No, the Friday came the Saturday. Because I remember she said to me, we was living at Bolton Road in Halstead, and when she said she was going to do some shopping, so I come with her and she started, you know, and we went up to Halstead High Street, and that just didn't... It didn't just seem so strange to me. It didn't like... Very tired. I remember being very tired, because I was so excited. It, it just seems empty. So quiet. We never had a key to get in anywhere because even though we had our own rooms, there was no, it wasn't a lock with a key. It was just so open, you know, push going my grand room or my aunt, they come into ours. It's just so open. But when my mum came, the first thing she said to me, I'm going, you're going to have this key and you've got to wear it around your neck. And if you lose it, you have to wear it around your neck because if you lose it, you can't get in because I'll be at work and you can't get in. And I said, well, why do I need a key? I've never had one before. So that's when growing up now, I realised oh, a key to your front door is so, so important to you because I got locked out so many times. She put it around my neck, a piece of rope around my neck. <laughs>
And then after she said, come with me, man, I'll show you around. And then I became friends with her. But it took me a little while to get in. And they also put me in a lower grade class than I should be. And then when I went home, I said to my mum, like, what they're giving me, I've, part, I've done this. And I remember her went back to school and said that, you know, I shouldn't be in this class, I should be in the next class up. And they've moved me into the next class up. And that's when I, uh, you know, had more friends, start getting more friends and got settled in. At first, I, I didn't like it because it's so, it, it was very structured, you know. Back home, it's not you, you have, we have different class, different, but we had one teacher who teaches everything. But here you had to move from room to room. A couple of times I got lost. I didn't know which room, and it was very noisy. Because I think once the kids then come up the room and the noise and start shouting and whatever, it's very, you know. And then what I noticed as well, when, when I was at school, we used to find that there all the black kids are here, all the white kids are there, and all the Asian kids are here. It's not like, no, it's like everybody is integrated with each other and have a friend. I never had a white friend at school. It's always black friends, because we never, we never seem to mix in with anyone. We just had our groups over there. And that's where we stand. We'll come up the classroom or playtime, lunchtime, and we ate for the sour corner. <laughs> and that's their corner and stuff. So we never, I never thought I had, had a white friend at all. Come to think of it, it's always just black friends we had. A lot, a lot of the kids that I grew up with came from Jamaica. Just one and two that was born over here, not many. The only difference was with them, I think when I just came in, they like how I speak. And they just said that little about you, because they could say, I'll take you around, I'll show you around. And I used to remember on Saturday, you know, I used to say to my mum, I'm going, is it all right if I go to the cinema with Rose, you know? And she said, yeah, yeah, I want you to make friends. Go on, go on, go on, be every seven. I think the first thing I saw was this, I think it was a Kung Fu fighting sort of, sort of movie. Because I remember everyone came out and started doing this Kung Fu. <laughs> and then in the playground, because a group of us went. And I think that was the first one that, um, I can remember when we do. And another thing I can remember at school, as my mom, which my mum did, um, they were going on a school cruise, you know, like whether you go on a summer camp or whatever. And at that time, it was probably, say, about £30 or £50. I came in with a letter with mum and she said, oh, you can't go because I can't afford it. It's only me one. How are you going to do that? And then, you know, she sort of said, she wrote a letter to school and said um, that I can't come, whatever. Then they wrote and said, oh, you can pay for it weekly. And, and then I said, like, OK. And I remember every Monday morning taking this, this envelope to school. I can't remember if it was £2 or £5 or £10 you know, for me to go on this school cruise. And that's what some, I always look back on, because she sacrificed a lot for me, you know. And then to go on there is where we had to have different sort of clothes because we had to have um, clothes for school, school and school, clothes for sports and clothes for different things. And you know, she started, she done a lot. I remember going down to Shepherd's Bush Market, buying all my school. I was so excited going on this cruise, you know, because all my friends were going and I was the only one at the time who said not going. But after writing to school and said, but you know, Oh, whatever finances like to say, oh, we can pay for it weekly or monthly. It, it was an educational cruise, yeah. Because uh, one place I can always remember we went to see the Rock of Gibraltar and we went around Spain, quite a few places. But it was nice because it was fun, you know. And as I said, with all our friends going there, it was ed educational because in the daytime we had to like attend school. And then in the afternoon it was playtime. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, all around, looking around this huge ship or boat, whatever you used to call it. And, you know, I think it was for 10 days we went away for. I can't remember having, having a black teacher, to be honest. Yeah. No, I can't remember. I had one English teacher that I really took. His name was Mr. Warburton. And he was really, he was really, he was very handsome, you know. I think all the girls like to go in his, <laughs> in his English class, but he was good. He really teaches well, you know, but I think, no, I think the boys then got treated differently because they're, so, they're always getting into, into fights. 
a voice, you know, and I think they were treated differently to us. <laughs> So I was I was pretty happy. I was, I was you know, because being my mum was a very um, pushy sort of person. You know, I remember one of her because she used to work when she was working in the laundry. We used to um, do my summer holidays. She used to get jobs there for me because she said I didn't want to leave you on your own for six weeks or whatever. So I used to go and work with her, but I didn't do the job that, you know, she did. She's not again out to help her sort of load the machine with the linens or stuff, but she should just sit down and if you see anyone coming, just pick up something like you're working or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, and, and so I worked with her and then that's when, you know, we had extra money because I, you know, I got, I got paid there, there for working, but I didn't find in me. The only thing that my mum always said to me growing up, she didn't want me to work in a factory. She said, factory, she said, I didn't bring you here to work in a factory because you can see how oh, hard I work. And, and then you see the senior boss or even your manager come in, you have to be on your P's and Q's. You know, you can't be just standing around chatting and laughing and stuff like that. And she said, I don't want this for you. You know, so her, her advice all the time is always, don't come work, work in, an, in, an off, in, in a factory. But she didn't sort of said, give me a career move. She didn't say, come to be a teacher or a nurse or a doctor or whatever you want to be. She just said, don't go work in, in a factory. And then um, I remember my school days as well. Um, I went to do short and typing at, at a school here. It was still here, Buckingham Road. This is Griffin. And I used to go there twice a week to do short and typing because she wants me to work in the office. You know, so after I left school, that's where it started. Got my first office job and haven't looked back since. It was a house like this, okay. exactly a house like this. And there's um, two rooms and one was for first stage and one was for advanced. And she was very strict. She was from, she was a, she was a white lady, but she actually she's come from the old school. And she had this, her hair was always up in a bun and she walks with a ruler. And if she sees, because if she sees you looking at the keyboard that you shouldn't look, she'd hit you on the, you know, not in a horrible way, but, you know, because it should be covered. But sometimes you have to just ease it over to have a look to see what key you're on, you know. And then we did um, short end as well. I went there for, for quite a while. I remember one, one day it was snowing outside. And it was so pretty looking. So I remember um, taking take a glass from out, out, out the cupboard, went downstairs and fill it up with the snow, went back upstairs and pour some syrup on it. Because you had that back room. And my mum said, no, 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 you can't eat that. It's not good for you. you can't. But I used to love the snow then because I've never seen it before. So I used to go out, I used to go out there and play in, in, in the snow. But also living in at Bolton Road, it was completely different because again it reminded me of a tenement yard because the house is, the house was big like this and they were all rented out. So my mum and I had one big room, like the, the front of the house. There's another couple, married couple at the back. The landlady and her husband was downstairs and another um, lady was downstairs. Yeah, so the landlord lived with us there at the time. And we, we used to get treated differently because my mum was a single, a single mum. So we, we had, even just to go into the kitchen when we had to go and cook, we had to wait until the married couple cook. Then we, we, we have to go in there after them. And I remember my mum used to wake up so early in the morning to get to use the cooker before they come out. And if they come out and they feel, sometimes they feel the cooker a bit warm because they knew some, she would go to Mr. Hardy or Mrs. Hardy, never forget them. They used to go downstairs and tell the landlady, Miss Byfield, that we used the cooker before them. And she, yeah, and she used to, you know, really curse my mum, you know, and said, this is not, you know. And when I came, my mum rent went up. And we used to give her money for the meter to put into, for the gas in the liquor meter. And my mum had to give more because obviously there's two, um, two, of, two of us in the room. And we only had one burner um, to cook on. 
and that's what my mom, you know, so late at night, I'm going, you know, mom used to go in and try to do the heavy stuff, like it's the meat stuff. She used to cook at night before. And then when I come home from school, I used to um, cook the rice or the food, which I didn't cook properly. Cause my mom came home to a lot of burnt food because I used to love to watch this program called Crossroad. So I used to rush in from school and I'm sitting there watching it and the rice would get burned, the dumpling or whatever, you know, cause I couldn't cook cause I never used to, you know, so my grandma, and my aunt used to do the cooking, but eventually it got better. I think what was that, you need a community. We didn't have that. You know, we, we, I think we made our own community. But it's nice to know if you got, um, say, right, I'm from um, Jamaica or I'm from Barbados, can we have something like that? And exchange, exchange how they feel, whatever, instead of just come being on their own or with their parents or just stuck in the school that, that they don't know anyone. But I think for me, because a lot of the kids, as I said, are from the Caribbean, so we sort of mix in. But I don't think it's happening now, so I thought that's what will be needed.